Good morning, Day Spring. How is everybody doing? Amen. We're all blessed to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's just worship God together this morning. I want you to sing this song with us. Let's just say, God, you are our way maker. You are our promise keeper. You are our light in this darkness, God. We just thank you so much, Jesus, for everything that you have, you have done so far, God. We are alive because of you, God. We are here because of you, Jesus. Sing. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place, and I worship you. I worship you, say, you are here, moving in the midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. And they say, they make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey, say, they make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are we say hey you are here turning lives around and i worship you i worship you you are here touching every heart and i worship you I worship you. You are here, say, mending, mending every heart. Yeah. And I worship you. I worship you. You are here, say, healing, healing every heart. And I worship you. Oh, I worship you. And they say, we make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey. And we say, we make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Say, we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sing one more time, and we sing. We make miracle work, promise keep 
Light of the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Listen up. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. See, even I say, and even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And we sing, way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, oh God, that is who you are. Miracle worker, we make 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 miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, 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 we make miracle work, promise keep night in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. And that is who you are. God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Yes. We praise your name, Jesus. We know, God, that you have healed before. You have done miracles before, God. You have opened doors that have been closed. And we know that you will do it again, Jesus. Your promises never fail, God. You will do it again, God. You will take me out of whatever situation I am in, God. You will do it again. Amen. Say, I sing and move. Come move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way Where there was no way And I believe I'll see you do it again I've seen you move Come move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way where there was no way and i believe yeah i'll see you do it again say i'll see you move come move the mountains and i believe i'll see you do it again and you made a way where there was no way and i believe 
and I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. Good morning, Dayspring. Hope everyone is safe and healthy during these times. Summer Bible series Crazy Rich Christians is going on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom with Pastor Peter. We hope you can join us. We're reading in the book of Romans. Sundays at 9 a.m., Sister Nadine has a prayer class going on through the phone. If y'all are interested or need extra prayer in your life, ask Pastor Peter for more information. They also have prayer meetings on the phone on Tuesday nights, if you guys are interested on that as well. Every Sunday at 2.30 p.m., the Sunday school teachers have a meetup with the kids on Zoom. Connect your kids to hear about Jesus from the comfort of your home. Acts 20.35 says, And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak remembering the words the Lord Jesus said himself. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Sadly, we're not able to meet in person yet, but the church is still working, giving, and paying the financials it needs to stay afloat. Thank you to everyone who has continued to bless the church. May God bless you 10 times more. Today at 10.30 a.m., Pastor Peter goes live on Facebook to talk about a topic, Leave the Grave Behind. We hope that you can join in and listen because it will be a blessing to everyone who listens to God's word. Uh, my name is Pastor Peter. I'm with Day Spring Cypress Church. We're so glad to have you here with us today. I hope you're able to join us on our praise and worship. Man, our passion worship team is so awesome, man. They're just anointed. So if, wherever you are, let's just give a hand clap for the skills and the talents that God has blessed them with. Praise God. So they get us ready to prepare and to receive this message. So again, I just I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for taking time to share and your faith with us and to hear the word that God has for us. I want to ask you something. If you're on Facebook, I'd ask you to like it, to share it, to make your comments, send your emojis, do all of that. Let's get the word of God out. Let's, let's get the gospel out to different cities, different states, and even other countries. And we do that by sharing this with all of your family and friends. So before we uh, get into anything, we always have to start in prayer. But I want to ask you this. Now I ask you, I want to tell you, expect something great to happen today. Expect the Holy Spirit in your life today to do something starting today right now. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day. We thank you, Father, for giving us your word, Father, today. This fellowship, this community, this church. I thank you, God, for everyone that is tuned in today right now. Father, I pray that their hearts are truly ready to receive. That it's fertile ground, Lord God, and that the seeds that will be planted today and watered, Father God, that you will reap a harvest a harvest of joy, a harvest of witnesses, a harvest of disciples, Lord God. 
Please help us, Father. Move me out of the way, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would speak through me today, Father, to everyone that is listening today. I pray that as people share and like and make comments, Father, they feel connected. They feel connected with each other, but more importantly, God, that they feel connected with you. So, Father, I just thank you for everything, Lord. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, praise God. So, listen, we, we're in the the very beginning of our Moving Forward series. Man, I'm so excited about this because it is time for us as individuals and as a church to start moving forward. Are you ready to start moving forward? One of the things that stops us is our past, something that we, I'm calling the grave. Let me ask you this. What do you think of when you hear this, leave the grave behind? Many people may think a couple of different things. They think uh, maybe the grave is scary. Maybe it's, I don't want to have anything to do with the grave. Or maybe you've recently lost a loved one and you're thinking, man, I don't want to talk about the grave. But listen, when we're talking about the grave, we're going to get deep into what God's word says about this and how you can leave your grave behind. Recently, I was talking to somebody and the person told me, man, before Christ, I was double-minded. I was tormented by my thoughts. I was always arguing with myself, my insecurities. I was tormented by my sin and ruled by darkness, shame, and, and their past. But then he said, but after living in Christ and they received the Holy Spirit, man, their mind was clear. Their life was clear. And that they had a new life, their new family, everything was full of blessings, full of joy, full of love, full of peace, Brothers and sisters, full of victory. This is what this person's sharing. Who doesn't want a life like that? Man, if you want a life like that, type that in the emoji. Man, I want a life like that. I want a life like that that God has for me. So how can that be, somebody might be saying, man? How can I leave the grave behind? Or how can I live a life like that when I've gone through so much in my life? When I've done so many things in my life? When you may look and say, man, I was dealt a terrible hand growing up. You don't know who I, who I was raised by. You don't know the circumstances. No, I don't, but Jesus does. And even with all of that, he died for those things on the cross. He came and he sent his Holy Spirit down here to live inside of you so that you could live like him. That's what I know. And listen, Paul tells us this in 2 Corinthians. This is our first scripture of the day. We're going to type that into the comments here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any person is in Christ... Somebody type that in Christ in the comments. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, fresh and new has come. When you think about grave, there's nothing fresh and new about a grave. So do you live the life right now that Jesus died for you to live? Do you live it? See, only you know. Do you live it? I mean, listen, get into Christ Somebody type this in, get into Christ and get out of the grave. Get into Christ and get out of your grave. Because if you're in Christ, brothers and sisters, Christ is in you. And there's nothing holding you back. There's nothing to leave that grave behind. The grave is where dead things are buried. That's where your sins are. That's where your fears are. That's where your failures are. And that's, you know, whatever is in the grave, it rots. It rots away. It stinks. It's useless. It's lifeless. Inside of graves, it's dark and lonely. It's full of pain. You know what the grave is, brothers and sisters, my fellow believers, my Christians, my sons and, and daughters of God? Do you know what the grave is? It's the old you before Christ. That old sinful you. That old lost you. Throw that stuff away. Jesus didn't die on the cross so you could hold on to that, so that you could stay into the grave. No, throw it away. Let's throw that stuff away. Let's start today. So why do some believers choose to stay in the grave? Man, that's a great question. You know, you can look at a believer, somebody who's given their life to the Lord. Somebody who's done it a long time ago, man, but they still seem stuck in depression, in sadness. They can't break free of those chains of sin that have just been holding them down for so long. Their old way of living, they, whenever they're around old friends or old family members, they all of a sudden start doing the old things that they used to do before Christ. They just can't get out of that grave. Why is that? It's because you're not in Christ. When you are in Christ, you can climb out of the grave. 
because when you are in Christ, Christ is in you. And nothing is impossible with God. So throw away your old self. Throw it away. Live the new life that Jesus died for. Listen, we're going to go to our next scripture right here. It tells us, Paul tells us again. And, and it's just, I love, I love the Gospels. And I love the letters from Paul. Because they tell us how to live as a believer. you got to pick up that word and start seeing it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24. I'm going to type that in the comments there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 through 24. I told you just a minute ago, throw it away. Look at what Paul says. He says, then throw off your old evil nature, the old you that was a partner in your evil ways, rotten through and through, full of lust and shame. Man, before I continue on, how many people felt like that was them? I felt like I was rotten through and through, full of shame. The old sinful nature, man, I was just a partner, you know, a partner in crime to, to my evil ways. And Paul is telling us, man, throw that away. Throw that off. Let's go to verse 23. It says, now your attitudes and thoughts must be constantly changing for the better. Man, hallelujah. Yes, you must be a new and different person, holy and good. Clothe yourself with this new life. Somebody type that in the comments. I'm going to close my, clothe myself with the new life. I'm going to clothe myself with a new life. Let me ask you this. What do you do with old clothes? What do you do with shoes that, that have holes in them and soles are gone? What do you do with things that break and set? Man, you throw them away. It's not good. You can't use it anymore. It's old, right? And think about this for just a moment. In your life, before Christ, is there anything good worth bringing up? Is there anything good with, worth reliving in your old self? So why don't you throw away that old self? Why don't you... Leave the grave behind. Leave it in the grave and leave that grave behind. Old and new doesn't mix, especially when it comes to the kingdom of God. Why do we try to mix our old life, our old lives with our new lives? It's because we're not in Christ. And Christ is not in us. When you're in Christ, there's no other way. There's no other way to live but the new life that God has for you. So we keep living the way that we used to live. Some people, they don't know that there's another way. They keep getting lost in their sins over and over and over again into their old behaviors, into their own patterns, into their old ways of life. Listen, if I'm talking to you right now, listen closely because it's not just me. It's the Holy Spirit that's convicting you. He's talking to you right now. And so if the Holy Spirit is talking to you, listen. And listen to the words that God has given us today in Romans chapter 6. Verses 1 through 5, Romans 6, verses 1 through 5. This is when you feel like, man, you're lost in your sin and you're lost in your old way of life. You try to break free, but you keep going back. You try to climb out of this grave, out of this darkness, but you keep falling right back inside. Listen to this right here. Here's the answers in God's word. Romans 6, 1 through 5, it says, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. With an exclamation mark, Paul says, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Did you hear that? If you have died yourself and crucified yourself with Christ by believing in him, man, you've died to sin. So why do we keep living in it? Verse 3, or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Jesus Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Praise God. You know, just the other day I baptized four teenagers. Man, they gave their life to the Lord. Pastor, uh, Brother Mike, you know, he, he had been preaching to them and talking to them and helping to lead them in Bible study and understanding what their next step was in their faith, and it was baptism. And man, and they came and they got baptized. The new life. And just two weeks ago, I baptized three other people. Why are people getting baptized right now? It's because they're ready to live this new life. They're ready to put the old self and leave it buried into the grave. They're ready to climb out of this grave and lead the new life that Jesus has for them. Are you ready? Or have you forgotten? According to the scripture, it says, don't you remember? When you were baptized, you left that grave behind. You were baptized into Christ. And so when you were baptized, you died and your sins died with Christ in baptism. 
Brothers and sisters, don't forget that. Those are the things worth remembering. Not remembering your old party days. Not remembering your old sins. Not remembering your old ways of life. All the people that you've hurt. Listen, if you've done all those things, then what you're supposed to do according to the word of God is repent. Ask God for forgiveness and then receive his forgiveness. And then move on. Too many times we stay there. Maybe you feel like you need to torture yourself. Maybe you feel like you need to feel the pain and the suffering of your sins. Maybe you feel like you haven't gotten enough. You know, you deserve more for all the things that you've done wrong. You know, that's not for you to judge. God is the judge. What we're supposed to do is to receive his forgiveness. Receive his mercy. Receive his grace. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord, for not punishing me the way that I deserve, Lord God. And then once we thanked him, you tell him, you repent, say, Lord, I won't do that again. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my life. And then you do this. Leave the grave and live the new life that God has for you. Man, somebody give me an amen and tap it in your comments there. If you're following me, what I'm saying, man, praise your, praise your Lord and lift your hands up and choose. Man, give your life to Jesus. When we see the letters of Paul, you see a man who has given his life to Jesus. When you see the disciples, Peter and Philip and John, and Tom, when you see them, you see men who have given their life to Jesus. You see people, Mary Magdalene, who's given their life to Jesus. It's time for you, brothers and sisters, to give your life to Jesus. Choose to live in Christ so that you can get out of the grave. Get in Christ, get out of the grave. How do you get in Christ? Somebody might say, how do I get in Christ? Man, start worshiping him. This is a form of worship right now. It's not just singing. Worshiping him is, is how you live your life. Do you go to him before you go to anybody else? Do you do things when nobody's looking because you know God is looking and so you'll do it for him? Do you give your life to him? Does everything you do glorify God or does it glorify you or someone else? You see, if you glorify God, you're worshiping him. The next thing you must do, man, to get in Christ is to read the word of God. There's no way around it, brothers and sisters. I say it every single Sunday because you have to, have to, have to do it. You have to read the word of God. Then you have to pray. Pray and ask God. Ask him to talk to you. Ask him to use you. Thank him for what he's done. And then, of course, when you need him, ask him. Pray to him. Praying is nothing more than talking to the Lord. You talk to him like you would talk to your best friend, like you would talk to your spouse or to your parents. This is the same way we talk when we pray. Fellowship with other brothers and sisters, man. You get around other believers and you just have something in common. There's a bond that you have. Man, this is how we get into Christ. Also, you're fellowshipping with other believers, right? You're getting in. And then finally, serving other people. You can't be in Christ and not serve. He was the ultimate servant when he came. Jesus was here as the servant leader. And he served everyone that he came in contact with. Do you serve everyone? So how do we get in Christ? We worship Read your Bible, pray, fellowship, and serve. When you're doing those five things, you will be in Christ. And when you're in Christ, you will get out of that grave. If you're with me, type an amen in the comments on that one. Because I want to be, I don't know about you, but I want to be out of that grave. I don't want that grave. I don't want things to keep pulling me back inside that grave. No, I'm, I'm done with this grave. I've had enough graves in my life that I keep stumbling back into. I got enough graves that they look, maybe they feel comfortable. Maybe they feel, oh man, I want to be there again, man. But that's, there's nothing good in there. It's cold, it's dark, it's dead, it's lightless in the grave. I want to be out of the grave. Brothers and sisters, if you want to be out, type that in. Say, I want to be out of my grave. And to be out, you must be in Christ. There is no other way. Brothers and sisters, it's time to move forward. Some of us, some of you have been in your grave. You, you get out of one grave and you go right and fall into another one. And some of you have been into the same grave, the same grave of unforgiveness, the same grave of depression, the same grave of hate, the same grave of victim mentality, the same grave of whatever of your sins. It's time to get out. It's time. Brothers and sisters, time is short. The Lord is coming again. There is no way around it. You can look at the world around you and you can see that we are getting ready. We are at the end times. I don't know if it's today, but if it's today, I know that I'm ready. Are you? Are you ready? You can't be ready by being in the grave. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get out. And some of you might say, man, I want to climb out. If you want to climb out, put that in the notes. Say, I want to climb out. You know who will help you climb out? The Holy Spirit will help you climb out. Stand on Jesus' shoulders, man. Climb out of that grave. Jesus died.
to give you a new life. So leave that old life behind. Leave that old life behind in the grave. You don't need it no more. It didn't bring you nothing but pain and misery. If your old sinful life did nothing but bring you down, then why are you going back to it? And don't go back to it. Go to the new life that God has for you, the one that Jesus died for you to have. That's the new life that you should be seeking. That's the one that you should be living, not the one in that dead, dark grave. No, get the one in the bright, shiny, warm light. That's the new life that Jesus has. Amen? You can't move forward. You can't move forward as long as you're looking back. Somebody typed that in the comments. I can't move forward while I'm looking back. Somebody type this one in the comments. You can't live for today by living in yesterday. Can't do it. Can't live for today by living in yesterday. How many of you live in yesterday? How many of you keep looking back and say, man, what happened to me so many years ago? What happened to me back then? The way that I was back then, I, I'm no good for God's kingdom. That's not what Jesus says. Look at what his word tells us in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. Boy, if there's ever a moving forward scripture that you should hold on to this series, it's this one right here. It says, do not remember the things that have happened before. Do not think about the things of the past. Some of your versions might say dwell or ponder. And look up those words for yourself. In verse 19, see, I will do a new thing. It will begin happening now. Will you be ready for it? I will even make a road in the de wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wow. That new thing, man, that's you. He says, I will begin to do a new thing. Will you be ready for it? That new thing is you. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. And when you are in Christ, man, you are out of the grave. And then he talks about road in the wilderness. Think about this for just a moment. A wilderness, animals, jungles, I mean, trees everywhere. There's no path. The Lord will make a path for you, a roadway. What is a roadway? A roadway is a way out. It's a safe path to follow. The Lord, when you for, don't remember those things in the past, when you stop dwelling in the past, when you get out of the grave, the Lord will make you a road in your wilderness. And then he will make a river in your desert. When you're in a desert, you will do anything to look for water. And if you don't find it, you die. But when you find it, it means life. And that's what a river in the desert is. It's life. So see, the Lord knows we're going to go through wildernesses. He knows we're going to go through deserts. And what's he going to do? He's going to make us a safe way to get out of the wilderness and give us life in the deserts. Man, if you're with me on this, man, give an amen. Give a hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because that only happens when you're in Christ, when you're living in your new life. Jesus didn't die for nothing. He died so that you'd have a new life. And guess what? He wants to help you climb out of that grave when you go to him. Or you say, no, I got this, Lord. I, I can climb out of this six-foot grave. No, you can't. You're going to fall right back in. Or you're going to look up and you're going to say, it's just, you know what, I'll do it tomorrow. Or maybe next, you know, I need to hold on to my bitterness just a little bit longer. You know what happens when we have a, a grave of unforgiveness and bitterness? We start looking at the people that have hurt us and we say, if I'm mad at them just a little bit longer, then they're going to suffer. Here's a newsflash. They ain't thinking about what they did to you. So the only one that is suffering is you. They're not in that grave of I hurt you or what they did to you. They're out of that. You're in that grave. Why do you want to give them more power over your life? If somebody's already hurt you once, if somebody's already betrayed you once, if somebody's done something terrible to you, why do you want to continue to give them power over you day after day by staying in the grave? You don't need to. Jesus died so you can have a new life. And when you're in Christ, you have a new life. And that new life doesn't have to be in that grave. And you don't have to hold on to that bitterness and unforgiveness. No, you can move on and start living the life that Jesus has for you to live. I got to tell you, probably one of the most disappointing things would be for you to accept this message on your deathbed. Maybe the last few minutes or last few hours of your life. Instead of accepting it now and having decades and years and years of an abundant new life. Man, accept it now. Get out of that grave. Get into Christ and get out of the grave. 
But you must go to Jesus. You must go to him to get out of that grave. You can't do it by yourself. We're going to go to this last scripture here. It's in Psalm verse 40, 1 through 3. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. This is what happens when you go to him. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. Before I go into verse number two, how many times do we think God doesn't hear us or he doesn't care about our crying? He doesn't care about our pain and our suffering. And the word of God tells us the complete opposite. If he didn't care about those things, Jesus would not have come here to die for us. He showed his love for us by coming, being born of a virgin, dying on that cross and rising three days later. He showed us his love. So if you say, man, he doesn't hear me, he doesn't hear my cry, he doesn't care, that's not true. The word of God is full of every, of all over the place where people are saying that he has heard my cry. So let's go on to verse number two. Listen to this. This is how I know Jesus wants you to be out of the grave. Verse number two, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. You know what that mud and mire is, the pit of despair? Man, that's a difficult and filthy place. It's a dark place. You know what it is? It's the grave that I've been talking about all morning. The grave. He lifts you out of that. So he set my feet. Let's continue on with the scripture. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. Verse 3. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Hallelujah. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Help me, Father. When you wait patiently for the, for the Lord and you go to him, you know he hears your cry. You know he sees your sadness. He hears your prayer. And then he will lift you out of that mud. He will lift you out of that mire. He will lift you out of that place of despair. Brothers and sisters, he will lift you out of the grave. And he gives you a new song to sing. You see, new and old doesn't mix. You don't want to sing old songs in your new life. No, you want to sing new songs in your new life. Jesus, man, he's not dead. If Jesus was still in the grave, that's where he would want us to be, but he's, he's alive. Listen, I follow a living Savior. I follow a living Savior. He gives me a new song to sing. Jesus is alive. He's not in the grave. I didn't give my life to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ, a living Savior. You see, I know where I came from, and I know where I am right now. And I know why I'm here. And brothers and sisters, I know where I'm going. Do you? Do you know where you're going? I'm going to leave that grave behind. Are you with me? I'm going to leave those graves behind. Are you with me? Some of you have more than one grave. You go from one to the other. It's time to leave them behind. It's time. Jesus is alive. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is out of the grave. He is not in the grave. He is alive in here. And so when you are in Christ, you are not dead. You are not in the grave. You are alive. You have something to do. You have something to share. And you have the promise of eternal life when you are in Christ because he is in you. And when he is in you, you are out of the grave. Get a, can I get an amen if you're following me on this? Listen, it's time, brothers and sisters, to move forward. It's time for some of you, you've been playing around with Christ for a little while. You say, I'm going to be a, a Christian on Sundays and maybe on another day during the week. But it's time. It's time to leave that behind. It's time to leave that part-time or spare-time Christian mentality and Christian life. No, it's full-time. Brothers, it's overtime Christ. We need to be overtime Christians at this point right now. And so it is time to move forward. Stop using the, the coronavirus as, as an excuse. But that's another grave right there. It is. But it's time to climb out of that thing. Stop watching the news so much. Stop wondering all this stuff. Yes, you need to be safe. Yes, of course, we need to pray and pray that this thing go, goes away. But stop living in that grave of fear. Stop living in that grave of sorrow. Stop living in that grave of despair, man. Stop it and start living the life that Jesus had died for you to live. It's yours. All you have to do is be in Christ and he will be in you. And when he is in you, you will be out of the grave. And guess what? You will be living that new life that he has for you. Jesus is with you, brothers and sisters, when you are in Christ. And because he left the grave, because he conquered the grave, say this with me. Somebody type it in the comments. 
Because he left the grave, so will I. So will I. And say it with boldness. Say it with confidence. Because Jesus left the grave, so will I. Let me tell you what. This sermon was inspired by the song from Hillsong, So Will I. It says, if you left the grave behind, so will I. Not if he left the grave behind. He did leave the grave behind. So if you're ready to leave the grave behind where you are, I want you to repeat after me. Just repeat these after me. Dear Jesus, if you want to type them in the comments, type them in. But if you're ready to leave this grave behind, if you're ready to start living for the living Savior, if you're ready to start living with the living Savior, with the living Christ, then I want you to say this. Dear Jesus, because you gave your life to the Father, so will I. Dear Jesus, because you denied your feelings, so will I. Because you overcame fear, so will I. Because you turned away from your sin, from sin, so will I. Because you sacrificed for others, so will I. Because you lived to serve others, Lord, so will I. Because you show everyone mercy, so will I. Because you forgave the unforgivable, so will I. Because you loved and prayed for your enemies, so will I. And finally, dear Jesus, because you left the grave behind, so will I. Give your life to Jesus today and choose to live in Christ. Worship him. Read the word of God. Pray fellowship with other believers, and serve others. Live in Christ so you can get out of the grave and live the new life that God has for you. Brothers and sisters, man, your future is so bright. It's so bright when you live in Christ. You can be like that first person that told me, man, I was so tormented by my thoughts and my insecurities, but now I have a new life in Christ and blessings are everywhere. Don't you want that? Man, your future is so bright when you're in Christ. It doesn't mean you won't have problems, but what it means is that you'll be able to overcome problems with God's strength. You'll have joy knowing that, hey, this is just a temporary trial, but no matter how long this sickness lasts, no matter how long my re broken relationships last, no matter how long my unemployment lasts, that I have an appointment with, with God in heaven for all eternity. That's an appointment that won't be canceled when you are in Christ so if you're ready to live that new life, man, and live that bright future, man, go get it. Start living it right now. Go live it. Now is the time. Somebody type this in the comments. It's time for me to leave my graves behind. It's time for me to leave my graves behind. Brothers and sisters, it is time for we, all of us, it's time for you to leave your grave behind. Live that new life that Christ died for you to live. Man, I'm so happy that you're receiving this message today. If you're receiving it, man, somebody give me an amen. Somebody give me a hallelujah. If it's speaking to you, it was supposed to. That's, if that's something in your heart talking, that's the Holy Spirit talking. He's saying no more part-time Christianity. He says, I need overtime Christians right now. If you're ready to be an overtime Christian, type that in the comments. I'm ready to be an overtime Christian. No more spare time for me. I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to serve the living Savior, and I'm going to live with my risen Christ. If you're with me on this, man, let's all stand and, and, and uh, pray together as we go to the Lord and thank him for all that he has done. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful day, Father. Father, I thank you for this encouraging and empowering message, Lord. Father, I don't want to stay in my graves anymore. Lord, I want to leave them behind. Lord Jesus, you left the grave. You conquered death. You showed us that we can do it, Father, when we're with you, Lord. So I pray that somebody today, somebody thinks, man, that grave is too deep of depression. Lord, that's nothing for you. All you're telling them is to stand on your shoulders and you will lift them out. Somebody thinks, man, my sin is too dark. I'm struggling with sexual immoralities. I'm struggling with adultery. I'm struggling with pornography or whatever it is that they're struggling with. And they think, man, it's just too dark that you would never go into that grave to get them. And that's not true. Lord, tell them right now in their heart, all they have to do is cry out to you and the Holy Spirit will help to lift you out. Father, somebody may feel like they're sick, like they're weak, like their disease is too strong. They're fighting cancer. They're fighting something that the doctors are saying. We don't know what it is and, and you don't have much time. But Jesus says 
you can come out of that grave. Jesus is telling you right now that you can and you will live eternally with him. So don't worry about that. You keep fighting that good fight of faith. You keep lifting up his name in prayer. You keep worshiping the name above all names. You keep fellowshipping. You keep reading the word of God. You keep worshiping him with everything that you are. And Jesus has promised that you will live a life of no pain, no tears, no more suffering. That life in heaven will be where all things will be new. You will have a new body a new way of life. You will have a whole family of believers, of brothers and sisters all around you. And at the drop of the name of Jesus, everything and everyone will worship. That is the life that he has given you. That is hope that he has given you. But when you're in the grave, you can't see it. So Lord Jesus, I pray that you would pull them out of the grave. I pray that they would look to you, Father God, and pray and give their lives to you so they can stand on your shoulders and that you, Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, will pull them out. And I'll start living that new life. Lord, it's time for all of us to leave those graves behind. Those graves so no, serve no purpose. Father, but when we are alive in you, we have purpose. And I thank you, Jesus, for the love that you show us. I thank you for the life that you give us. I thank you for all that you are doing. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. I truly hope that this message blessed you. If it did, type an amen. Say if it was just for you. I mean, share it. But don't forget to share and like this post. Send your emojis. Do everything you can to get the message of God out. Somebody had to hear this today. I know it wasn't just me. So I want to thank you guys for your support. I want to thank you for continuing to support this ministry through your tithes and offerings. I thank God for you. I thank God that we're able to bless Boys and Girls Country this week. They're, they're really were struggling financially, and so we were able to give uh, an additional financial gift to them. So praise God, that's because of your tithes and offerings, your, generous, your generosity, that we're able to help them get supplies and the things that they need. Boys and Girls Country, in case you know, is the orphanage here in Hockley. And so they have almost 100 people there that all have to do at, uh, learning there at their campus. So they're not really equipped exactly for that. But I'm hoping that the financial gift that we gave them is going to allow them and help them to do that. So praise God. And it's, it's your tithes and offerings that are helping do things like that. Helping to families with financial needs and car problems and grocery problems and gas problems. I mean, there's so much going on right now, but it's because of your generous offerings that we're able to do these things. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So again, I want to bless you guys. I pray that you'll have a wonderful week. On behalf of my wife and I, we love you so very much. We can't wait to see you again. Stay tuned for our announcements. We're going to get together again sooner rather than later. I can't wait for that. If nobody's told you this uh, sometime this week, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and so do we. We hope you have a blessed and great week. God bless you and we'll see you again next Sunday. Don't forget to tune in and invite all your family and friends to tune in with us next Sunday. God bless you. Have a great day.